Hello everyone, this is a video of uh, laparoscopic tap plus repair for a case of spigillian hernia. This is a left sided spigillian hernia. You can see that there is Roman Damos content. Uh, so, after uh, placing the port and uh, with head down and left sided up position, I started raising the flap at least 5 cm proximal to the uh, defect margin. And then uh, uh, you can see using the hook with monopolar uh, cautery. Uh, I am raising the peritoneum and not just the peritoneum but the preperitoneal fat also. So going grazing along the posterior rectus sheet. So here uh, the spagellina hernia is actually a hernia which is below arcuate line. So we will be able to see the arcuate line here is the posterior rectus sheet and below uh, the posterior rectus sheet is deficient. You can see here uh, only the uh, fascia translis is there. So here in the upper part over the posterior rectus sheet, the peritoneum is thin. So we have to be very cautious uh, not to make any undue rent in the peritoneum. And you can now clearly see the arcuate line beyond which uh, there is only fascia translis and preperitoneal fat. So raising uh, that part becomes easier once I go down uh, towards the hernial side. Here in this patient, I am standing on the right side of the patient and uh, uh, dissecting it on the left side and going further. Uh, we able to see the inferior epigastric vessel and uh, that vessel should always uh, stay up and uh, uh, very gently with a little bit of uh, tissue dissection at a time uh, creating the plane further and uh, well, the idea is to uh, dissect uh, at least uh, uh, 270 degree all around the uh, defect and then try to uh, attack the sac try to reduce the sac after that so before that uh, uh, on the right side and the left side of the hernial uh, defect the peritoneum should be raised nicely so you can see the lower part uh, towards the pelvis i'm just uh, raising for the peritoneal flap you can now clearly see the inferior epigastric vessels uh, and uh, gradually creating further plane along it and now uh, i'm just uh, trying to identify the plane uh, uh, of the peritoneal uh, I mean the hernial sac and the uh, defect margin so here the traction and contraction is very important so I am asking my uh, scrub nurse to put pressure from the outside and uh, with gradual traction with the left hand instrument and uh, a little bit of swiping movement with the hook back of the hook just uh, uh, releasing the attachments of the hernial sac with the cavity and now you can see the defect uh, margin is getting uh, visualized once you uh, reduce the hernial sac and the preperitoneal fat and the hernial sac is now completely reduced without any rent in the hernial sac and then and now beyond the hernial defect margin so so all around the idea is to all around create at least uh, five centimeter uh, preperitoneal space all around the defect so that i can place a uh, a nice uh, adequate size of mesh in that uh, preperitoneal plane so going on to the lateral abdominal wall gradually towards the uh, uh, space of bogros uh, 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 the plane is further created and uh, lower down i'll be lower down i'll be encountering the cord structures so Limited dissection is required in that area because there was no inguinal hernia in this patient, only a spigillian hernia. So you can see now the uh, Bogros uh, uh, space is getting uh, created. The Dulux fat is on the lateral abdominal wall. And a uh, little bit of uh, lower down, little bit of further dissection is required, which I did with uh, change my instrument. I am now using my left hand to create a little bit of further uh, dissection to create further preperitoneal pain in the lower down so just uh, safeguarding the inferior epigastric vessel staying just below it and uh, creating a little bit of space so that now i'm assessing whether the uh, dissection is adequate or not so almost the dissection is uh, complete here you can see so the defect is nicely seen over that area and the uh, preperitoneal plane creation is done so once i uh, create the preperitoneal uh, space nicely this is the defect you can see the 
uh, this is the interparietal hernia the inter internal oblique transverse abdomen is forms the defect uh, surrounding the defect and the uh, roof of the defect is formed by the actually the external oblique aponeurosis so now closure of the hernial defect this is the closure of the hernial defect is done by using one zero a uh, non absorbed velox suture in a continuous manner So once uh, the defect is nice, the, all the defect in the hernial defects are, uh, should be closed nicely so that there is chance of less chance of uh, mesh migration, pseudo hernia formation. And uh, once the defect is uh, nicely closed, uh, I'll be placing the mesh in this uh, preperitoneal plane. So this is a medium weight uh, regular polypropylene mesh, flat poly, flat sheet of polypropylene mesh. So the once you uh, place it inside and uh, uh, unfold the mesh, it takes the uh, area nicely and uh, uh, the mesh should lie flat in that area. If the uh, area of dissection is adequate, it should lie flat uh, in this area in the prepared you know, plane and you can see the mesh is sitting nicely with that area and there is... Uh, no need of uh, fixing no need to fix the mesh uh, and uh, right away i'm going for the peritoneal flap closure because once you deflate the pneumoperitoneum the the mesh will be sandwiched between the peritoneum and the abdominal wall and here i'm using a 30 uh, absorbable pda suture to close the uh, peritoneal uh, flap so while closing i have decreased the pneumo pressure uh, to uh, 10 millimeter of uh, mercury and it helps uh, in uh, nice uh, closure of the peritoneal flap and also during the defect closure also so uh, that completes uh, the uh, hernial uh, peritoneal flap closure this patient was absolutely painless recovery in the postoperative period and discharge within 24 hours from the hospital and doing well in the postoperative follow-up period so this is after closure of the uh, peritoneal uh, flap i'm just uh, uh, making it uh, tight enough and now uh, we'll take out the gas from the preperitoneal plane you can see once you so i take out the gas from the preperitoneal plane the mesh is nicely sitting over that area thank you for watching